Hey Nick, can you do a video about Lagrange points? Sure, that sounds fun. Science Asylum is a proud partner with Dollar Shave Club. Hey crazies, extreme gravity like you'd find around black holes gets a lot of press, but you don't have to take gravity to the extremes for it to do unexpected things. Sometimes even Newton's laws are enough. Lagrange points are one of those times. There are five special points around the orbit of a planet or moon. Those Lagrange points orbit with the planet or moon, so you can stick things in there like space probes and they'll stay. It's pretty cool actually. We take advantage of them all the time, well, at least the points around the Earth. There's a whole list on Wikipedia. They love lists over there. But there's kind of a glaring question here. Um, why do things stay there? And to answer that, we need to delve a little deeper into Newtonian gravity. The simplest example would be the Earth. If some tiny space rock wanders nearby, the Earth will exert a force on it, which in turn lets us predict the path it will take. That's basically how Newtonian mechanics works. An unbalanced force causes an interesting motion. If there are no forces, or the forces are balanced, the path is just a boring straight line. Okay, so, so the single force from the Earth can only do one of three things. It can speed the rock up, slow it down, or make it change direction. Or any combination of those that make sense. That's what acceleration is. There's nothing unusual about that. It's typical of any unbalanced force. That's pretty much what Newton's second law says. To get the weird things like Lagrange points, we need two objects exerting a force simultaneously. Let's consider the Earth and the Moon together. This is what they look like to scale. Any rock that drifts into this space is going to have a force on it from both. But on the line connecting the Earth and Moon, the forces on the rock are in opposite directions. See where we're going with this? Somewhere on this line, the forces should cancel each other. Since the Moon is less massive than the Earth, it should happen closer to the Moon. Right about here. Pretty cool, huh? Except that's not actually what we want. At first glance, that looks like Lagrange point number one, but it's not. The forces on the rock might be balanced at the moment, but that won't last very long because the Earth and the Moon are moving through space at different rates. That's highly unstable. Lagrange points are always at least semi-stable. So where did we make a mistake? We don't actually want the force to be zero. Remember, these points move around as the Moon orbits. Anything at those points will be traveling along curved paths. Curved paths are accelerated paths, and acceleration means there should be an unbalanced force. So we need to be a little more careful. Rather than two forces adding to zero in Newton's second law, we want them to add to give us curved motion instead. This is the centripetal or center-seeking acceleration. Doing that puts the Lagrange point a bit further from the moon and a bit closer to the Earth. This is Lagrange point number one, or L1 for short. It's about 36,000 miles from the moon, compared to the location from earlier, which was only about 24,000 miles. You could use the same technique to find L2 and L3, but this isn't very elegant. It requires us to already have some idea of where they are beforehand. And it isn't very obvious why L4 and L5 even exist. There's a better way to do this, but we need to do two things. First, we need a change in perspective. While we know the moon orbits the Earth, th this would be a lot easier if it didn't. So let's pretend like it doesn't. Can we just do that? We do this kind of thing all the time. It's called a coordinate transformation. Rather than having the moon drag all the Lagrange points around, let's imagine our coordinates are going around in the opposite direction. It's like rotating our camera with the moon's orbit to make everything look stationary. The second thing we need to do is, is stop talking about forces altogether. It's going to be easier if we do this in terms of energy instead. That gives us something like this. We've got the gravitational energy from the Earth, from the Moon, and from the rotation we're not seeing. We should be able to map it across space and watch the Lagrange points just pop out. Here it is! Hmm, that isn't so helpful, is it? Oh, I, I know, Let, let's try shading instead of numbers. Boom! Okay, that's, that's not so helpful either. Maybe if we imagine the energy value as a height? Oh, I see what the problem is. Lagrange points are really subtle, so we're going to have to exaggerate things. But, you know, I, I think we can still make that last graphic work. Imagine you're standing in the middle of a valley created by a circular mountain range. The first thing you'd see is this flat ledge. If you place a ball there, it'll stay. Any deviation from side to side, and the ball will simply roll back to the ledge. Any deviation forward or backward, and the ball will roll away, down the cliff. That's exactly how L1 works in space. Any deviation this direction, and the space rock will return to L1. Any deviation the other way, and the rock will fall toward the Earth or Moon. Mathematicians call that a saddle point, 
and L2 and L3 work in a similar way. In the mountain analogy, you'll find L2 on the slightly higher ledge behind L1. L3 is directly behind you, so you'll need to pull a 180. Again, any deviation side to side and the ball will simply roll back. Any deviation forward or backward and the ball will roll away. For that reason, these three points are considered semi-stable. L4 and L5 are a different story. You'll find those on either side at the highest peaks. The mountains are really flat up there. They're very stable locations. Wait, wait, how can those be stable if the cliff goes down in all directions? Yeah, well, th that's where our analogy breaks down. That's the problem with analogies. They, they all break down somewhere. In space, any motion of the rock will activate the Coriolis effect. That effect makes the path of the rock spiral back into L4 or L5. In our analogy, it's as if the motion of the ball changes the mountain. Which sounds a little strange, but rotating frames are weird like that. Anyway, I I've only been using the moon's orbit so I could draw things to scale. The most useful Lagrange points are actually on Earth's orbit around the sun. If you want a space probe to monitor the sun, you put it at L1, like SOHO. If you want it to always point away from the sun, you put it at L2, like Planck. Unfortunately, those require course corrections every month or so. L3 lasts a bit longer, but it's not much use since it's always blocked by the sun. It could never send us information. L4 and L5 are so stable, they tend to collect space junk naturally. They don't even need to be related to the Earth. All orbits have these points. My favorites are L4 and L5 for Jupiter. They're filled to the brim with asteroids. So what are Lagrange points? They're five special points around the orbit of a planet or moon. They orbit with the planet or moon, so they're locations of stability. Objects can remain stationary with respect to the planet or moon. Some of them are fully stable, while others are only semi-stable. But the two least stable points are actually the most useful. We regularly put space probes there for a consistent view of the universe. So what do you think about Lagrange points? Cool? Not cool? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. We all have our everyday grooming routines, from showering, to brushing our teeth, to yes, shaving. I don't know about you, but I shower and brush my teeth every day. No matter your routine, Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to help you look, feel, and smell your best. A lot of you have probably heard of Dollar Shave Club and think they only stick to shaving products. Well, don't let the name deceive you. Dollar Shave Club can solve all your grooming needs in one box. Shower products, oral care products, hair products, skin products, butt wipes, and obviously shaving products. Basically, if you have a body, they've got you covered. Not only do they ship right to your house, but the more you buy, the more you save. They call it their handsome discount. Now's the time to see how amazing and high quality their products are. Right now, they have this great offer where you can get their shave, shower, or oral starter set, each for only five bucks. They sent me all three of their starter sets. Check it out. The shave starter set comes with the executive razor and a three ounce tube of their Dr. Carver shave butter. The oral care starter set comes with their weighty toothbrush and a trial size version of their toothpaste. The shower starter set comes with three trial size versions of their amber lavender body cleanser, citrus and Hawaiian ginger face cleanser, and sage and black pepper shampoo. Join the club with one of their starter sets for just $5. After that, the restock box ships with regular sized products at a regular price. Get this exclusive deal at dollarshaveclub.com slash science asylum today. The featured comment comes from Michaela, who said, it doesn't matter if reality is discrete or not, because all numbers are just abstract ideas. I like this approach because it means the answer doesn't have to be open-ended. Yes, pi exists because all numbers exist in our minds, and, and our minds exist, I, I think. Anyway, thanks for watching. 